Welcome everyone. My name is Dina Rogers. I'm one of the two undergraduate advisors for the Bachelor of Science in Public Health. Uh, welcome to the first part of our three-part series in the fall quarter for the Getting Involved workshops. We have Study Abroad as our first workshop. And with us today, I have Jim Galvin, who is the Director of Program Development at UC San Diego. He's responsible for managing our faculty-led global seminars and third party study abroad programs, as well as risk management. And he actually did study abroad as a public health major when he was an undergrad. So that was very uh, exciting as well. So welcome. I'm going to pass it off to um, Jim now, and he's going to start um, by um, his presentation. So, and we will have uh, time at the end to uh, answer any questions that you have. So thank you so much. I'm going to end Jim and we'll get started. Great. Dina, thank you so much uh, for this opportunity. And uh, I'd like to thank all the students for joining us uh, today. We have a huge turnout and I'm just thrilled that you've all taken time out of your busy schedule to learn a little bit about uh, study abroad. Um, I'm going to talk broadly about um, how to think about study abroad, how to set your goals. I'll then profile some of the programs in global and public health. And then I'll also talk about affordability. We'll cover things like financial aid and scholarships. Um, and then I'm gonna talk about some next steps, uh, how to continue exploring, how to take some concrete steps uh, to plan and apply for various programs. Um, so I'll take about 20, 25 minutes or so to cover those points. And then we're going to have Sage uh, take over and she uh, is a study abroad returnee and she's gonna be able to share her experiences having gone abroad. What were her goals and motivations? What did she get out of the experience? How has it helped her? And then of course, uh, to really talk about these perspectives in terms of how it applies towards the graduation. Um, and then at the end, uh, we're going to have time for a Q&A, question and answer from you. And Dina has reminded me that though this uh, will be recorded, we're not going to record the Q&A. So, um, you know, that we'll, we'll have a little pause between the formal presentation and then uh, the Q&A uh, piece, which will not be recorded. Okay. Um, Sage, did you want to just introduce yourself uh, before I get started and then we'll go from there? Okay, thanks, Jim. Hi, everyone. My name is Sage and I am a former UCSD uh, alumni and I'm also your <laughs> global health advisor and I work as the anthropology advising team as well for the undergraduate side. And I also was an MA student in global health in the past. And I was a UCAP alumni. So I went on the University of California Education Abroad Program. Uh, and that was in 2018. So, you know, double dipping here as your global health advisor. And I also have experience that I'm gonna share today. And I also was a recipient of the Gilman Scholarship. Thanks, Jim. <laughs> Thanks so much, Sage. So, you know, between Dina and Sage, we've really got you covered here from public health to global health. And uh, I just want to, you know, give a shout out to both my colleagues. Uh, they are fantastic professionals. And we work very closely with between study abroad and the departments and the colleges to make sure that you can fit these courses into your graduation requirements and that this is going to be a really wonderful experience for you. Well, first of all, I'd like to talk a little bit about study abroad generally. Why go abroad? What's the value in going abroad? Well, you know, many times study abroad is a journey of self-discovery. Uh, you know, you really learn a lot about yourself, the, the personal things, the development of independence and self-confidence, flexibility, you know, the ability to look at a topic through a different lens, uh, to understand that there are multiple ways of solving a problem, of analyzing an issue, and uh, also really the, the wonderful thing about developing new friendships, new connections, uh, it really is one of the high impact activities that you can do while you're in college. 
some of the other high impact things would be doing research with a professor, being actively involved in a student group or organization. Uh, these are the types of things that really enrich your college experience as well as your life and your perspective on things. And it certainly did for me. Uh, my abroad experience is 35 years ago, but it has impacted my career uh, profoundly. So I can say that it really mattered for what I do. Um, so when you're thinking about study abroad, start by thinking about your goals. In other words, what's your dream? Why do you want to go abroad? What, what really motivates you? So think about your personal goals. Um, think about how this would fit into your academic plans. And then uh, consider how it would fit into your career and life path. So for example, many times students will come to me uh, as global health or public health majors and say, you know, I'm interested in getting my master's in public health. Um, uh, I'd like to do my global health field work. Um, I'm planning to do an MD, MPH program, you know, any of these types of things. Um, and they really uh, want to fit the courses towards major minor requirements in that sense. Um, personally, they may have always had an interest in other cultures, and they really want to begin going uh, into an immersion experience and really experience a summer or a semester or even a year abroad. And then there's the career track. You know, graduate and professional schools really value high impact activities like study abroad. Um, now you can get into an MPH program, med school without going abroad. But if this is your passion, you should also be happy to know that uh, graduate school and professional school admissions committees really like to see international uh, and global experiences. So set your goals. Then um, think a little bit about the logistics. Where would you like to study abroad? Now, some people come to me and say, I absolutely want to study in you know, Costa Rica, or I want to study in a Spanish-speaking country or gee, I'd like to be in Europe, you know, wherever it may be. Or sometimes they'll say, well, I could go anywhere. So that, those types of appointments, uh, may, we may have a few more conversations to narrow the field and that's okay. We'll, we'll work with you wherever you are. Um, but think about the location, think about the discipline. Now our focus today is about global health, public health, but maybe you really wanna do in-depth language study for a year and learn Japanese. You know, we can help you with that kind of thing too. You know, so don't worry about that. And then the next one would be, what time frame are you looking at? Do you wanna go in the summer? Uh, I know many times students in the STEM field, you may have a lot of activities as well as requirements, required classes that you need to fill during the academic year. So summer is often a great time to go. But maybe uh, we can find a program that fulfills some of the key requirements and you would do a fall semester. And notice I said semester rather than quarter, because most of the rest of the world is like Berkeley in the sense that they're on the semester system. So a 15 week fall semester and then a 15 week spring semester. But that spring semester usually starts in January and runs through April or maybe early May. So, you know, that's another option uh, to think about. So our most popular times to go abroad are summer and fall semester. So summer, quarter, fall semester. Um, but you pick your passion, okay? Now, how soon do you need to start planning this study abroad experience? Well, generally we will say at least six to nine months before you wanna go. Because unlike a lot of things in life, study abroad has very long lead times, which means there are application deadlines and those are often very early in the process, just because to get everything set up and prepared, you, you need to plan ahead. But I have worked with students who have looked a year or even two years in advance to find the right time. And sometimes we'll begin having conversations and identifying programs, and then I may refer students to Dina or Sage to say, okay, let's look at my four-year graduation plan and see when I have some openings, some windows to take classes. So it'll be a back and forth sometimes to get it right. 
and no, uh, there's no one size fits all. And we really want to tailor this for your interests. Okay. Um, another thing to keep in mind, I, I grouped this under logistics, um, but it is just the issue of uh, COVID. Uh, we are now running study abroad programs. Um, you know, to go abroad, of course, you'll have your full COVID vaccinations. Um, but it is important to realize that sometimes students will get COVID while studying abroad. So I do uh, always say to students, if you have an underlying health condition, very important to speak to your physician um, to make sure that this is the right time or safe time uh, to go abroad. Um, so those are all some things to keep in mind. Um, now, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about some of the types of study abroad programs we offer here at UC San Diego. And I'm going to ask my, my colleagues, is it possible to share the screen um, to see? It should, so there should be a share button, share screen at the bottom. Ah, let me, let me see here. Share yes, screen? Okay. it's usually green. Yep, that's okay. Screen. Can everyone see the screen uh, with the study abroad website on it? Yep. Good. Okay. Thank you, everyone. So this is um, the resource that I really want to highlight today. It's our website. All the things I'm talking about are on our website. So all you have to do is remember studyabroad.ucsd.edu. You'll be able to go in there and I'm going to show you where to find these pieces today. So uh, the first thing uh, you know, I'd like to uh, focus on is our study abroad. Uh, you can see our study abroad fair. That's coming up on um, uh, October. There it is, Monday, October 17th from 10 to 2 in Town Square. And we're going to have 20 different uh, organizations lined up, uh, including the Global Seminar Program, the University of California Education Abroad Program, and many of our OAP partners uh, that have global health programs, public health programs. So you're going to actually be able to go through and pick up postcards and links and talk to representatives and sometimes talk to faculty uh, from Global Seminars about study abroad. So uh, that's again on Monday the 17th from 10 to 2 on Town Square. So many of the things I'm going to talk about now, the various programs, again, they'll be there in person. So let's go to students, okay? And there's a variety of things, get started. You know, of course, the, the biggest one is you've taken the first step, you've come to this session. Checking out our website would be a next step. But I'd like to go down here to find a program. And this is where you can actually learn a little more about them. There's the global seminars. We have some global exchanges that are just getting started. The education abroad program and opportunities abroad. So I'm gonna spend some time talking about each of them. So let's start with global seminars. These are summer programs that are taught by UC San Diego professors. So if you're feeling like, gosh, there's 40,000 students plus running around campus and you know, you're in center hall with 300 of your best friends in class and you really would like a small college experience. Think about global seminars. These are uh, typically five week programs in the summer taught by a professor who usually has won a teaching award. And the class size is between 15 to 28 students. So you're gonna have really small classes and you'll take two classes with that same professor and those same students. And we have several of these that focus on global health, public health topics and others that will fulfill gen ed requirements. Uh, so we have over 20 global seminars for summer uh, 2023. And what I wanna do is just go down here And we have field of study. You can also search by location. And of course, they're all summer uh, sessions. But let's uh, go down here and we pick global health for a moment. And by the way, the global health and public health uh, would be the same. So we have a, 
a few uh, programs here. We have a program in Bali, Indonesia that I'm going to talk about, uh, another program in Bangkok, and then we have Edinburgh, Scotland, and an anatomy program in Paris. So we've got a lot of choices here. Uh, the first one is our Health, Healing, and Sustainable Community Development in Bali, taught by Professor Leslie Lewis. Uh, this program was offered this past summer. Students loved it. If you want to go to Indonesia and learn about traditional Balinese medicine and Western medicine and how healthcare practitioners meld those two together, then this would be a wonderful program for you. Let me just open this up. And uh, we're still populating some details here, but you can go in and all the global seminars, the format looks the same. You're going to get a profile of the professor. I like to say they're the rock stars. So you'll be able to see who you'll be learning from. And again, these faculty members, Leslie Lewis, you know, teaches other uh, global health classes. Uh, you know, we had public health and global health majors on this program and they, you can look at her, uh, capes and they're outstanding. Then you'll see the two courses. So there's an upper division, uh, anthropology, medicine and healing, and then the upper division ERC, health environment and community. And by the way, you do not have to be an ERC to do this global seminar. That course will count towards, you know, the 180 units you need to earn a bachelor's degree here at UCSD. And then a little bit more about why you should go. Um, and we have a meet the professor session for every global seminar. This one is coming up on Wednesday, November 9th. And as the name implies, Professor Lewis will be talking about her program and she'll be taking your questions. And then uh, this is a uh, summer session one program. Uh, we have some other details here. Uh, you know, we haven't finalized the fees yet, but within a few weeks, those will be available. We'll have the academic excursions as well as where you'll be living. So this is, this is just one of the programs, but I think it's a terrific one and uh, you may be very interested in it. And then when you come back from a global seminar like this, you have a professor who knows your name, who can become a mentor. You can take more classes from that professor. You might even be able, if they have undergraduate research opportunities to do that. And when you're applying to graduate professional programs, you'll have a professor who knows your name, who would be able to write a very strong letter of recommendation. Uh, the next one, designing programs for sexual health. This was taught by Professor Dredge King. He's taught this before. If you have an interest in HIV um, and supporting communities that have been affected by HIV, Professor King's research is in this area. Um, he's taught this program twice before, um, you know, tremendous opportunity here. And it's only because we're limited on time or I would go into more details, but of course you can check them out. Um, the next one, genetics, pandemics, and society. Well, we, we are still in one of the greatest global pandemics in history. And if you want to learn about the history of pandemics, going back to things like the plague, you know, in the 13th century, and all the way to the modern times, uh, this is a wonderful program. The, the second course is a genetics course and uh, Dolly the sheep uh, was cloned there. The first of the test tube babies uh, was at University of Edinburgh. So Edinburgh, Scotland is one of the most interesting locations to study genetics. And they also have a great museum again on uh, pandemics. So, and if you're a Harry Potter fan, uh, this is where JK Rowling wrote all the Harry Potter books and you'll, you'll see the cafe where, where she did that. So that's just kind of fun on the side. Um, the final one, and this is a brand new program, is Anatomy in Paris. And the professor who's teaching this one is a medical school professor in the Department of Surgery who also teaches undergraduate courses in anatomy. So if you're thinking about going to medical school or dental school or any of those programs where the first term of med school, you're going to have gross anatomy and you're actually going to, you know, do a cadaver, uh, you know, anatomy program and learn all of that. This is a good class for you. Now you won't actually be doing cadaver dissection, but there's observation pieces and you're learning from a professor from the medical school who will really be able to tell you about what med school anatomy is like. 
And the Department of Surgery really wants undergraduate pre-med students to be prepared for medical school. And that's why they're offering this undergraduate anatomy program. So what a, what a wonderful opportunity if you're pre-med, pre-dent, uh, any of those that would require anatomy, you have an interest in anatomy, to take anatomy from a medical school professor and you will earn undergraduate units towards your degree. Pretty cool stuff. And very few universities offer programs like that. So those are four great global seminars taught by rock star professors uh, who love to teach all over the world and five weeks in the summer, not bad. Okay, let me go back to um, our find a program and I'm gonna go to the next one real quick. Um, our global exchanges, those have core science requirements, but not uh, as much in the public health area. So you'd be more than welcome to look at that. University of California Education Abroad Program, Sage is gonna talk more about this, but there are uh, several in the global health, public health area that you can explore uh, here. Uh, and when you do a UC Education Abroad uh, EAP program, again, summer or fall tend to be the popular times and you would earn a UC credit when you're doing that. Of course, the global seminar that I talked about, those are all UCSD courses. So, you know, you can, you can use your financial aid and accounts for your GPA. Final area, Opportunities Abroad Program. These are some of the most interesting uh, global health, public health opportunities. I'll highlight a few of them very quickly for you. I've sent students to Costa Rica to do their uh, global health uh, field work and also to take a medical Spanish course and then the other three courses during, let's say, a fall semester would be in English, and you can study tropical diseases or um, global health in a developing country. And then you could also take a course to learn more about Costa Rican culture. Stay with a, a homestay a family, and you're not on your own. It's a small program, about 25 students, and the study center director is like everybody's favorite, Tia. You know, she's just wonderful. She's an, an aunt. Or maybe um, you would want to do uh, the World Health Organization and study in Geneva, Switzerland. I've sent several students to do a program there uh, so you could really learn about what it takes to go into global public health. Um, those are just a couple uh, to highlight uh, through our Opportunities Abroad program. Um, so uh, there are some other UC campuses that also you could check out to see if they have a good program, but that's your, your starting point to explore. Now, I wanna take just a few minutes to talk about financial aid and scholarships uh, because it's important to know that financial aid will package you. If let's say you have a Pell Grant here at UCSD, you have highest expected uh, or highest need, um, zero expected family contribution, for example, you can use state, federal, and UCSD aid towards a global seminar, towards EAP. And if you find an OAP program or a global exchange, you can actually use state and federal aid, though not institutional UCSD institutional aid. And the, the budgets for these, all these programs are on their websites. And we have a financial aid advisor named Eduardo who is a great resource to say, okay, how would you know I be packaged if I did the global seminar in Bali, for example? They can answer those questions for you. Then uh, it's also important to know that we have scholarships and uh, we have a scholarship application, one application through our office, which you can be considered for many different uh, scholarships. And the uh, federal government has a Gilman scholarship that Sage will talk about. And you know you can write a really good personal statement for a scholarship and just tweak it to apply for multiple scholarships. You know, And that's the wonderful thing. And we do workshops on how to do a scholarship for study abroad, because I know many students haven't written a scholarship uh, essay before. And in fact, for many students, you write an essay to apply to a study abroad program, and then that becomes the, the template 
then to use for your scholarship application. So for example, there might be three paragraphs. One, um, how does this fit in your personal goals? Paragraph two, how does it fit in your academic goals? Three, how does it fit in your career and life goals? Fourth paragraph, once you return, how will you inspire the next group of students to go abroad? This is helpful for the Gilman. And of course, there'll be a short intro and conclusion. So it's not that hard. And uh, we can, again, help you with that. So um, I'll, I'll finish up uh, real quick by summarizing uh, some of the next steps. And uh, it would be come to our expo on the 17th. That's less than two weeks away. Um, review our website in preparation for that. Once you've done those things, uh, you can contact our study abroad office. Uh, there is a, a sort of a next steps summary, and I've given you some of that here. Uh, but then you can make a Zoom appointment with me and we can chat more about those goals that we talked about. Remember that we'll be working with either Sage or Dina or their colleagues uh, to narrow down the program, find the right fit, find the right time, and then move forward with the application piece. Uh, you'll also uh, be able to talk to the financial aid advisor, Eduardo, if you so choose. And then, uh, of course, you always want to meet with your college advisor because you want to fit that into your overall plans. And then finally, I always recommend, uh, you know, talk to your family or those who are really important to you, you know, sit down at the kitchen table and explain your plans to study abroad, especially if they're going to be helping you out financially in any way. So that's, that's my quick overview. Uh, and what I'll do next is turn it over to Sage, and then we'll have the, the Q&A. Thanks, Jim. Hi, everyone. So I will try to go through this um, as efficiently as possible so that um, we can have time for questions. So as I mentioned earlier, I'm not only your global health advisor, but I'm also uh, a UCSD alumni and I did the UCAP program and I got the Gilman scholarship, which if it doesn't sound as familiar, maybe you know it as like the Fulbright, that's the graduate equivalent. So the US Department of State um, funds both of those programs. And so I was also a Hope Scholar, so former FOSS youth at Oasis. So just like to do that shout out. And I always like to kind of ask like why you want to go abroad um, and you know this will be something maybe in the Q&A portion we can kind of talk about a little bit and I can I think I can make my screen a little bit bigger so hold on one second. Oopsie no <laughs> slideshow okay uh, is that good everyone can see. Yes okay great. And so um, I went to Ireland, which um, I'm half Irish, so that was really cool. And I have living family there that I've never met before. And so, and I never left the country. And that was something I came to the transfer day. I was a transfer student at UCSD and Jim was presenting. And Jim caught me with the hook of, if you get Pell Grant money and you get Cal Grant money, um, you can use it for the UCAP program. And I said, wow. And sometimes it's affordable even. And I said, no way. Um, and then I kept listening to the presentation and I started calculating the numbers and I was able to go. Um, I was fully funded. Um, so the Gilman scholarship is $5,000. Um, if you end up doing a critical need language on top of your Gilman experience and it's approved, you can get up to 8,000. So um, I feel like I was like a poster child for UCAP. Um, but anyway, I had a great time in Ireland and I'm just giving you some pictures because I love pictures and I loved it. It was so much fun and I went all over and I did film photography. So really quick, like I said, Gilman Scholarship, um, this is going to require some essays and it's also going to require kind of talking about what you're going to do when you come back upon your return. And so I bring this up and also I want to clarify if anyone wants these slides, you can email me afterwards and I put my email in here and I will send you these slides. They are very helpful. I've used this with Oasis before in terms of tutoring. So um, if I go a little quickly, that's just because I want to get to the Q&A and give you all time. And OK, so it is for undergraduates studying abroad. Um, if you're eligible, um, you know, if you get any Pell Grant money, and um, US citizens and you're not going to a travel advisory country level three or four, 
Um, some short term programs are also eligible. And so that would include uh, certain global seminars and different parts of the Gilman application. So this is kind of, um, oh, I have Tina on here. So Eduardo is the new financial aid uh, counselor and um, very important and a great resource. So I'm happy that Jim brought that up because you're gonna wanna meet um, with them and you're gonna wanna meet with your um, country or area region advisor as well to talk about your Gilman scholarship application because uh, they actually help sign that off. So just a little bit of a heads up. Um, and then I would highly recommend, no matter what scholarship you're applying to, to look at their mission statement because you're gonna wanna tie that into your statement as well. And so they are literally saying in their mission statement, they are, they are looking for non-traditional students. And so that was really cool for me because as foster youth, I was like, oh, okay, they are looking for um, students that don't normally make it to study abroad. And there is an advantage of studying a foreign language slash being interested in a language abroad when it comes to the Gilman. So I like to bring that overlap over. And I was looking into Irish. So I did Irish language classes at night and they really love that. Um, but they do have a very specific critical language list. Um, and I have this in the slides there. <laughs> they, they have like very specific ones that they're looking for. And um, I have a little video that you can watch in terms of the slides. Um, but yes, when you're talking about your essays and Gilman requires, like I said, community service when you come back, mine was to give presentations at Oasis, which is a resource center on campus. And so I'm actually still doing that service work today. Well, I'm bringing up the Gilman right now to you all as your global health advisor and that you should apply for it because um, it's a great experience. One in four students gets it. And I've seen many students follow these steps uh, and get the scholarship. So um, I broke it down kind of here in terms of like, you want to talk about your connections in the community um, and uh, specifically a marginalized part of it, um, real examples of project ideas, why it's important to spread the word. Um, for me, I, like I said, I never left the country before. And so that was really important to tell students that they could afford it because Gilman, not only that 5,000 can go towards your tuition, but it can go towards your room and board as well. Um, so that's something that's really helpful and you can use it towards airplane money and all that extra stuff. Um, and I have a couple of statements here, but I'm gonna kind of go forward because I wanna keep mindful of time. And you can get these slides for me, like I said, but I, just like Jim brought up, I really want to um, point out that um, you can get so much financial aid by going at certain times of the year. And so really work with the financial aid counselor on that. I went uh, in the spring and winter quarter, so winter and spring quarter, and I got two quarters of aid, which was really helpful for my financial situation. Um, and then, yes, I have all this good stuff. And oh, wait, really quick. Um, I would like to say plan ahead, as Jim said, leave room for change and remember to study during your study abroad <laughs> because it's really fun when you're over there and you have all this access, especially like I was in Europe, so you could go anywhere. But, um, you know, at the end, uh, a lot of the schools have these big, big essays or tests and you're like, oh, my gosh. So just remember not to get too caught up in all the fun. Um, but with that, I will be able to share these slides with you um, if you would like. That's my email. And also, if you're GHP students, feel free to email GHP. And that was the library actually at my school at Trinity College in Dublin, which was just fantastic. And it was a beautiful school. And with that, I think we have time for the q and I went really quickly, though. <laughs> Yes, thank you so much. I'm going to, well, I'm going to unpin you first. And, and then, um, so this is when I'm going to stop the recording and then uh, we can open it up for questions and I will keep that. So hold on.